Houston, the greatest love of all states that children are the future. But where did we conceive the notion of youth being leaders of tomorrow? Can anyone answer that? Where did that thought ever come from that children have to be leaders of tomorrow? In fact, right. scripture does not state that young people have to wait until they are mature, well knowledgeable, or skilled before we can begin to serve God or take the word of God seriously. Parents, we have an obligation to help our youth consider the plans and purpose that God has set for their lives. Right now, our youth are more than capable of being leaders who desire to serve the Lord in their thoughts and their actions. Paul told Timothy, a young man in faith, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith and in purity. That comes from 1 Timothy, the 4th chapter and the 12th verse. God specifically commands us as young people, leaders, and to lead by example. You, it is important that you understand God's word and let others watch you grow in the word. I consider myself a young person. I'm worried about the church in the days ahead. I am worried about the youth who must attempt to serve as leaders within the body of Christ, the church. I'm worried because it's not easy living in a world of Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, 13 Reasons Why, Teen Mom, Empire, and Love and Hip Hop. You. Did you know that ABC is targeting you? Did you know that Fox is targeting you. Did you know that VH1 is targeting you? Advertisers target us. They tell us what is good. They tell us what is stylish. They tell us what is cool. They even tell us how to act. Primetime TV shows don't come on in the primetime hours anymore. Shows promoting homosexuality, violence, drug use, Premarital sex and unhealthy relationships are plaguing the eyes of our children every day. Some of these shows start as early as 7 p.m. Uh -huh. The fight on Facebook Live and the little boys working on Facebook and girls kissing girls and music videos. The most negative depictions of the black family, the black man, and the black woman are being showcased throughout media today. Everybody else is doing it. The attitudes of the world 
in which we live completely contradict God's word. First Timothy, the fourth chapter and twelfth verse reads, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Even in First Timothy, the fourth and twelfth chapter, Paul does not tell Timothy, since you're young, you have God's permission to turn up. Live a wild lifestyle. If you promise to live for him when you get old. Nor does Paul tell Timothy, while you are young, disrespect your parents and your elders. Give the older people a reason to look down on you and get on your case about the way you live and about the way you act. On the contrary, the apostle commands Timothy to do exactly the opposite. The young man is instructed to live a blameless life and be an example to others so those who are older would not have a reason to look down on him. Let's dissect the scripture. In the word, do you have a friend that says bad words? You know, cuss words, b words, all the people out their name. Scripture tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. From Matthew 12, the 34th verse. Choose your words carefully and deliver them carefully. If your words are vile, the listeners know that a problem exists in your heart deeper than the words you speak. So if your friend is always speaking badly, they have a problem. And eventually, it would be yours too if you don't separate yourself from them. In conversation, deals with conduct, our behavior, our lifestyle. How do we act around other people within our church or society? Well, the young or old, saved or unsaved, do we intentionally try to be difficult? Do we try to be cool? Do we try to be rebellious or wild and as non-conformist as we possibly can? What are you posting on Facebook and Snapchat? Does your mama even know what Snapchat is? Do they know you have one? When others observe your behavior, can they conclude that we are young people of integrity, discernment, and knowledge? If not, then you need to make a change. In charity, who knows what charity means? Charity means love. I'm not talking about this gooey boyfriend and girlfriend type love. I'm talking about an unselfish, sacrificial love. Giving a homeless man your last dollar. Cutting your elderly neighbor's grass and not accepting pay. Stopping another child from bullying or harassing another child at school. Giving your friend half of your lunch because you know they don't have any food to eat when they get home from school. Can you give something like your time, your allowance, or your labor to help lift someone else up? That's charity. In spirit, has your mom ever asked you to clean your room? take out the trash. And you said, Mama, dang, I ain't got time to take out no trash, or at least you thought it. Okay. Okay. You, know, you might not even say it to a black mom. Okay. Okay. <laughs> to be an example in spirit means not only do you outwardly do what we know is right to honor God, but you do it with the right attitude. Oftentimes when our parents, when our teachers, our pastors, our employers tell us to do something, we do it simply because we have no other choice but to obey. Right. Yet inwardly, we're frustrated or irritated or outright angry about what we have been commanded to do. And we let everyone know how we feel by our responses. We make ugly faces, we give off bad mannerisms and body language, right. or the tone of our voice may change to reveal the attitude of our hearts. Right. In faith, as Christian young people, we also need to be an example to others in our faith. This means that we must know who we are and whose we are at all times. This word does not mean that we simply have a belief in something. It means that we are convicted by our beliefs. We are to know and study God's message to us, his word. And we are to be fully persuaded and convicted that his instructions are our final authority over our lives. Impurity, especially for my kids who are about to go off to college, high school, all that stuff. Finally, we read in 1 Timothy, the 4th chapter and the 12th verse, that we need to be examples to others in our purity. You probably guess it refers to sexual purity, which God explicitly requires of all believers. All young people today, including Christian young people, face extraordinary pressure to become sexually active. We are surrounded by music, television shows, magazines, books, and video games that urge us in some way or another to sexually express ourselves. 
and to dwell into that which God has forbidden at this stage in our lives. Without reservation, the word of God explicitly forbids sexual activity outside the bounds of marriage. Despite the fact that the society in which we live readily accepts fornication and immortality as normal, it even glorifies it. What I'm saying to young men and young women is to wait. I'm not afraid of you being a teen mom or a teen dad, but I am afraid of AIDS. I am afraid of herpes, and I am afraid of HPV. It is real, and it is rampant. In closing, I know that many adults do not always provide the right examples for young people to follow. Some adults are downright hypocritical. Others don't even seem to care about what God's word has to say at all. The scripture does not say that the household we come from has to be perfect. The scripture does not say we have to belong to a mega church or a group, group to walk with God. Always seek the Lord for your own strength and use his word for your encouragement and understanding. God addresses individuals in his word, not groups. You can never expect God to use all of us for the same reason. The plan and the purpose that God has for you is unique and just for you. Don't wait until you are old to leave. Tomorrow is not promised. You can leave right now in your actions and how you serve God in your everyday life and allow other people to watch you struggle and grow and deal with problems while having Christ in your heart. So leave now in your youth. Thank you. Amen.